This is part two of the message from last week, the power of Pentecost. And I'm using the word pleroma, the word pleromatics, which we defined last week, the word which means fullness. Fullness. And last week, evangelist Michael Matthew illustrated that with a cup full of water and he overflowed, overflowed that water onto the pulpit. That's what the word pleroma means is fullness, overflow. What is the greatest force in the universe? Sister Elia Matthew talked about it just now. The greatest power is not the weaponry, the missiles, the ICBMs, the nuclear power that the United States and other countries have. But the greatest power that we know that is from the word of the living God. In the beginning God spoke and things started happening. Amen. Hallelujah. God spoke and universes start to God spoke and there was light. God spoke and the earth was created. So the greatest force is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, the scientists in World War II time, they discovered something of a great force in the smallest of things. They discovered at the subatomic level, there was something that happens when you split an atom. Most of us cannot see the atoms. It's at the sub-micro level, sub-atomic level. When you study science, you know that at the, at the molecular level, there is the protons, neutrons, electrons that are, are in the subatomic level. There's a force that keeps those cells and those subparticles together. There is a force that is binding that together. They found that if you split that atom, it produces incredible amounts of energy, incredible amounts of destructive or constructive energy. We see in the book of Acts here that Jesus said, in a few days you will receive Power, dunamis power, if you wait for it in Jerusalem. It's the power of that same creative force that created the universe, the power of the Holy Spirit that breathed life into Adam that morning, on that day. It's the life-giving power of God. Life-giving force coming out of His mouth. Jesus said, it's good that I go because there's somebody else coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A couple of Sundays ago was Pentecost Sunday and we talked about the coming of the Lord at Pentecost. We define the word Pentecost. I uh, 
part of our job now in the parsonage is to sort the mail that comes from three or four different sources. Did you, you, didn't know the, you didn't know your pastor was a mail sorter too, did you? Pastor's job is a lot. The pastors do a lot of things, but now my part of my job is, and part of Rufina's job is to sort the mail. So if I, once I leave the pastorate, I always have a job at the post office. I have experience now how to sort mail. Well, we got a mail in the at the house there, and the mail has the word Pentecostal, our church name in it, but it's misspelled. One was from Lakeland Electric, our electric bill, all these lights uh, from Electric Bill here. And the other one I think is a junk mail. But, uh, uh, it has the word Pentecostal as Pentecostal. Pentecostal and I walk and I'm spelling it. C O A S T A L. Pentecostal. Pentecostal check. So what I did, I called Lakeland Electric and I said, we're not a Pentecostal church, we're a Pentecostal church. <laughs> the nice lady at the Lakeland Electric said, yeah, I had a feeling that was the right name, but I didn't want to change it without an official notification from you. We are not Pentecostal people, we are Pentecostal people. What my message is, three points, power of Pentecost, the presence or the proliferation of Pentecost and the person of Pentecost. Pentecost is not a church label or denomination, it never should have come to that, but it has become a label but really Pentecost is an experience that is in you. There are people in all denominations and non-denominations that have the fullness of the Spirit and have the experience of the day of Pentecost. Whatever label that you have or you come from or background, you and I are called to receive the fullness of the power of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the go, go through the slides here. Act the power of Pentecost. We read it last week. It's uh, it's uh, part two. Are you on part two? I'm on part two. Okay, go to the next slide. Hudson Taylor, his a couple of quotes here. One's from Hudson Taylor. We have given too much attention to methods and to machinery and to resources and too little to the source of power, the filling with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to get back to the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I need to get back to the source of our power. We need to get back to the source of filling with the Holy Spirit. Those early disciples, they didn't do, they couldn't do anything worth anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. We have a lot of machinery, we have a lot of resources, we have a lot of money and nice buildings. But where is the power? Where is the power? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of the Spirit of the Lord 
is what we need today. 